Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial on how to replace the optical pickup or laser in a PlayStation 2, in one of the big ones. Now, I'm not going to show exactly how to pull apart the drive because each drive is slightly different. Like, for example, the drive in this version 4 here is different to the drive in, say, a V6 or a V9. So I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, it's pretty straightforward most of the time. Um, you just have to be a bit mindful of some of the um, little flex cables and stuff. You should already know how to take apart your PlayStation 2. If not, then it's probably not the correct tutorial for you. Or you can look up how to do it. Like, it's first time for everyone. It's pretty straightforward with most of them. See, mine's just got some plastic on top so I don't scratch it. Like, even though this bench is clean, it can still get a little scratch. So you got screws along the bottom here. Some of the models have screws here. And it, it's really different for each system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this apart. I'm going to remove the optical drive, the entire assembly. And I'll show you how to go from there. Okay, so you're going to need a few different tools for this. Um, you're going to need some screwdrivers, some small ones, Phillips, flathead, and if to pull apart the console you're going to need a larger Phillips head. Um, I've already taken mine apart so I won't be using this now. You will also probably need some Q-tips and... Sorry, I just have to fix that brightness up. You're also going to need some tweezers, you may need a soldering iron, um, preferably something that's not too hot, and something with a small tip, and I'll get into that in a minute. Um, you're also going to need the correct op optical pickup for your optical drive. Now, it's different for each model, but nearly all of them will have it printed on the rear here. You can see there. So this one here I've got is a KHS 400B, which is the same model of pickup that's in my optical drive. Now you're also going to need to remove the optical drive. They're all different in each model, so it's pointless for me to show you exactly how to do it. Um, there's tutorials out there on how to do it. So first up. You just want to move that forward again. We're going to need to flip over the drive. I'm just going to point out a few things here. Um, see if we can get that in closer. Okay. So, focus properly. Okay, so here's your optical drive. These two potentiometers here, one will control the power going to the the CD part of the diode. The diode is in up in here, and basically it's the whole guts of the entire thing. And the other one will be for the DVD. Now you shouldn't need to touch these at all. Um, some people like to tweak them and get the last bit of life out of the laser but basically what you're doing here when you adjust these is you're increasing or decreasing the amount of power going to this diode here. Now if the diode itself is getting old, which most of them are, it's been around for about 10 years, um, feeding more power to it can help it read better but that's not the proper way to fix it. Like if you're just going to be keeping fitting more and more and more power to this, eventually you will just burn it out and you have to buy a new laser anyway. So it's much easier just to buy a new pickup or a refurbished pickup with a brand new diode fitted. And the price for those floats around about $10, $20. It really depends which model you have. And the best way to search for it is don't type in laser or anything at eBay or wherever you're searching. You just want to type in this model number here, that's the model of the pickup you, you have and chances are you'll be able to get a new one fairly cheap. The one for mine is actually 
I actually got this one, a refurbished model out of a working unit, so it's an original diode and everything in it, but it's um, it's been cleaned up and refurbished and everything. I believe, actually, it has got a brand new diode in it, but the flex assembly and everything is the original green one, or the original one I had, so. Um, so for me, I just had to search for KHS 400B. You may or may not need to put in this little hyphen there. Uh, the rest of the numbers aren't as important because generally you just go off this number here. Okay, so to get started, we need to, we're going to need to open the drive. Well, I've got the top off the drive anyway. Um, I'll just take out that little battery there. Now to do this, it's they're all pretty much the same. Um, you've got your loading mechanism here. You can't really see it, but it's got some um, tracks in there. So basically the way you can pull it up is you can just get your screwdriver or just your fingers, hold it up off the ground a bit, and then the drive's in the unlocked state. Then we can flip the drive over and slide it out. You don't have to remove the tray. All we're interested in here at the moment is just these four screws which sit up on top of little rubber pads which help with it moving around and stuff. Now the best way to remove this, again it depends really on how yours is fitted, but as you can see it's mine is completely separate as far as the cables go to the rest of this optical drive housing here. Oh, I'll fill out a bit. So all I'm going to need to do is just get my Phillips head. Now the screws in this are are different, different lengths for the front and the back. They're different colours so it's much easier to tell. You probably can't tell in the video but these rear ones are gold, brassy coloured and the front ones here are silver. They're a bit shorter. Sorry if my hands are in the way. Now, some PlayStations have this wheel, some of them don't. Some optical drives do as well. Basically, this adjusts the, the pitch of the laser here. Now, you don't really want to touch this one either. It's best to just leave it on default setting for now. But um, sometimes it can help adjusting it. it. Just depends, really. So, see so it clicks backwards and forwards, and it raises and lowers the thing. Raises, raises and lowers your deck here. So now we've taken out the screws, we can just lift that straight up, take it out, just close the optical drive back up for now so it doesn't fall to pieces. Now, here is our unit. See it in all its glory. Come back again. Now, again, it's going to be slightly different for each unit, but the principle is basically the same. This optical drive sits on two rails here, there and there. It has a adjustment nut here. You shouldn't need to change that. Or you might need to remove it actually if the new one doesn't have one. And to take it out you're going to need a Torx head screwdriver. I think it's probably size 1 or 0, 0 or something. But first we're going to remove the deck itself or the um, just the pickup. So to do that we're just going to undo these two rear screws here and this is going to lift up free up those rails there sorry take that one out remove this one as well and undo it all the way there we go now that should just slide forward. Now, nine times out of ten, the new pickup won't have this um, grip arm here that connects up to the worm gear on the motor there to move the drive, the pickup backwards and forwards like this. There's your worm gear. Yeah, there. Looks like a worm, kind of. Worms in. Okay, now. Before we strip that one down, we're just going to check our new optical pickup. 
a new laser, whatever you want to call it, new unit. So here's mine. Just pull that back out. See that a little bit. Now, before you really want to touch this, if in case it doesn't have the, um, the anti-static point, which I said before, oh, did I mention that? That's what you're going to need your soldering iron for. Is these two little points here, there and there, they're um, ESD discharge points. Basically, they take the, I believe it's the anode for each part of the of the diode here, for either CD or DVD and just sends that to ground. So in case it charges up a bit of static inside here, inside this unit, it's sent it straight back down to this housing here and it should dissipate any, um, it should dissipate any static you've got there. So just to start with, in case those aren't there, you just want to ground yourself. I should be using a grounding strap, but I haven't, mine hasn't come yet. I had to get a new one. So I just touched something that had a mains earth connected to it, which is my power supply for my, um, soft light here. So I'm going to remove that. Now flip it over. Ah, you can. It does have them. So these two points here, one here and one there, they, um, they're, they're bridged, which means it's going to ground. So it's protecting itself. We're just going to flip it over. Probably can't see that. It's probably too bright, but um, it, is, it is the correct model. It's the same number. Basically the same board layout, just a different colored flex. And if you flip it around here, this is your diode in here, or your dual diode, because it's both for CD and DVD. It has these little points here. Basically this flex sits over the top. If you desolder that, you'd find a little point, a little diode in there. It's pretty cool looking. Same top head, top cover and everything. No adjustment screws or grip plate for the um, worm gear. So we're just going to set these two aside for now and I'm just going to grab a screwdriver because I forgot to grab one. Okay now I've got the correct screwdriver. It is a T6 Torx head. So what we're going to do first is we're going to remove this. Try and remember how tight it was. If if you got a if you got a um, if you got a torque head screwdriver like one that can tell you how many nanometers of torque you've got, that's very handy, especially working with small stuff like this because it is dependent on how tight that is. But generally, you can just get away with how tight it feels or how deep in it goes. It's about the same there. Now I'm not going to remove these uh, ESD points here just yet, just because I'm still handling the, the pickup, so now we're just going to flip this one over. And we're going to get our Phillips head again. Hold it like that. You don't want to put too much pressure on, even though this is the old one, you don't want to put too much pressure on it. Now, basically, this one's pretty much finished off. You can go in the bin, whatever you want to do with it. Now, with this new one, you have to be very gentle with it. Because we don't want to put any pressure on this new lens here. You don't want to scuff it or scratch it. So I'm just going to sit it on its original little bag. Gently pop it down there. Now, grab this piece. Helps if you've got a magnetic screwdriver. Pick up your, whoops, just stuck to it there. Get your screw and don't drop it. Easiest way I've found is to put it into this nylon, uh, this nylon gripper here. And just screw it in. I'm holding it up off the table if you can't tell nice and tight so it doesn't move, nice and good. If you've got some um, lithium grease or something, good idea to pop it on there. So there's our pickup already put together and everything. I'll pop it back down. Probably just turn the temperature down slightly on the on my iron. I've got it set to 
300 ish about there make sure it's nice and clean now we're going to pick this up and flip it over now you shouldn't need any solder wick for this usually if you're just working with a bare iron like this it should wick it up itself it's only a tiny little bit One done. That's two. It's only a tiny little bit of tack, so I'm gonna bring this up closer so you can see it. So there we go. Now you want to be pretty careful not to zap this at all, but Generally, it's pretty hard unless unless you're some sort of freak of nature. But recommend it to be using a, a wrist strap connected to a ground point, not just to your desk because that is not grounded. Um, yeah. So now we've got that set up. This lens looks nice and clean. Sometimes when you get them in, someone accidentally touches them. Or something when they're when they're um, packaging them up, but most of the time um, they're pretty neat when they do them. With a lot of my parts, I like to see photos of the um, place where they come from, the the factory in China or wherever they the the distributor. And um, I generally do that because I tend to order lots and lots and lots of parts, so I order them in bulk, and I want to be able to be 100% sure that they're actually going to work. Now flip this over. Again, same thing as before, just slide that out. Unlocks the dock drive, the tray. Or should. Hold on. I think I just locked it again. There we go. Slide that out. Put that aside again for a second. Now we go back to our Now we're back at our um, the assembly here. Now we're going to want to put this back in, but first we need to put in these little tracks here. So I'm going to put in this. They're the same same for each side, so it doesn't matter if you mix them up. Now this one here. You can get away without undoing this one at all, but it just makes it slightly easier. So you probably can't see what I'm doing. But I'm just uh, popping that one in there. On. Actually, no, there are different sizes on this one. Normally, they're not. Normally, the um, tracks here are the same size on each side. Make sure it's nice and slidey. Now, we're going to need to put in this open end first. Pop that in. We're going to need to pop this one down. It's a bit tricky getting them in the first couple times, but um, you get used to it. You just have to like just wiggle them around a bit, and they should fall straight into place. Whoops! Popped them up there. Now it's easier if you hold it up while you do it because this this pickup sort of hangs down below the assembly a little bit. So we want to grab our lock-in screw here, the ones with the really big heads on, the black ones, and screw that on down. You probably can't see this, but I'm just screwing them down. Now that's nice and secure. I don't have to worry too much about it moving around now, so... Double check that's going to be level. Generally with your um, your sled pickup, whatever you want to call it, this whole assembly here, generally this pickup here needs to be nice and level with the bottom of the disc. What you can do is you can just grab a 
CD if you got one laying around. Nice clean one. And just sit him on there. And just from the side, just see if it's the right height. It's nice and level with the disc as it turns. On mine it is. See the pickup isn't going to hit it, nor is the lens, because the lens in these, even though this is nice, this little lens here um, to adjust its focus will move up and down. Sometimes it can move a fraction of a mil higher than the edge of this. It's not meant to in most cases, but sometimes if it's, if it's a bad disc or something, it will try and focus that far. So you just have to keep in mind. And that's what a lot of people call laser burn, but it's really not burning it, it's just scratching it. Okay, so there you go. I'm going to pop this back in the system and give it a go. It should work first time. As I said before, if this lens looks a bit dirty, you can get some isopropanol or isopropyl rubbing alcohol and just doot, and then wipe it down. But this one shouldn't need it. Have a closer look. No, it's nice and clean. So there you go. That's how you fit a new pickup or laser into your optical drive.